Today I'm starting another reading vlog and this one I am interested to see how it's gonna go just because I have three books here that I am currently in the middle of but would like to finish all of them this week and for two of them that's gonna be kind of a questionable task so um, without any more preamble I'm just going to show you the reading plans for this week. So first up I am 191 pages into Legendary by Stephanie Garber. This is the second book in the Carval series and I read Carval last week and I really enjoyed it so I was really excited to jump into this book and while I'm not not enjoying this book I'm not enjoying it as much as I thought I was going to be enjoying it which is kind of sad. It's not bad. I mean I'm having like a decent time but I thought I was gonna like love it, you know, because I loved Caraval, so I was like, it's only gonna get better. But I kind of prefer the first one at this point. Maybe the second half of this book will pick up. I don't know. Definitely want to finish it up this week so I can start finale because I really just want to read Once Upon a Broken Heart. Like, I'm really hyped for that. I think I'm gonna enjoy that one a lot. So I need to get through the rest of Caraval to read that, so. This next one is a thick one. <laughs> so I'm reading this book with my friend Elaine and at the beginning of this book I was like if I wasn't buddy reading this I would DNF it. And that is House of Crescent City, House of Earth and Blood. How do I address this book? House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Mass. And I can already tell you that this is my least favorite Sarah J Mass series but it's entertaining enough. I'm on page um, 261 of this book. It's okay. I really wanted to love it but I just I don't know. I like Hunt, he's okay. I kind of like Bryce, she's okay. But I don't have like strong feelings towards either of them. Like my favorite character is Lahaba, the fire sprite. I just don't really like the rest of the characters like that much. I'm not obsessed with them. It's kind of interesting. I am decently interested in like the mystery that they're trying to solve. I think it'll get better. I think it's getting better right now. I think it just had a slow start and that's why I wasn't really vibing with it at first. I got the audiobook for it though and that's helpful. I do really like the audiobook. Although the narrator for this audiobook I believe has narrated maybe it was Akatar and Throne of Glass. So every time Hunt speaks I'm thinking about Rowan, I'm thinking about Kale, I'm thinking about maybe Cassian too, like all of like the other men in her books because they sound the same because it's the same narrator and like it's not the narrator's fault but I just think it's kind of funny. There are definitely a couple of aspects of this book that I'm really liking. I like the addition of other supernatural creatures because in her other series it's kind of just been like Fae, witches, I haven't finished Throne of Glass yet so like maybe there's more but I don't think there are but there's like a lot of supernatural creatures in this world. I like hearing about all of them and what they can do and what their place in the world is. Like that's very interesting, but not clicking with the characters, but hopefully that will change. And then the last book of which I'm really excited to talk about, which you've already seen me reading, is Dracula. Currently I'm in my classics era. Um, any of my, you know, given classics eras only last about two and a half weeks and then the motivation dies out but this one is really helping to keep it going because I'm really enjoying Dracula right now. I know a lot of people don't like Dracula because it's very slow um which it is but honestly I'm kind of enjoying it. It's just so atmospheric and I love the foreboding sense of just like dread setting in due to all of these events that are going on and I love vampires. Like I've talked about this a lot, but vampires are my favorite supernatural creature. Like no contest, no doubt. So being able to like read one of the first vampire stories is just so fun and I'm having a really good time. Yesterday I sat down and I read like 90 pages in like one sitting, which I have never come across a classic that I can like sit down and read that much in. So it's very easy to understand. It's really easy to read. I love the writing and it's just a really good time. Honestly, I think this has favorite classic potential right here. And I'm also annotating it, which is also a lot of fun. Annotating classics is just a really good time and I find it a lot easier to understand what's going on if I'm like actively engaged in a story like this. So loving this classic, good times also. <laughs> Um, this is just something I think is funny. This book I got secondhand, hence why it's so destroyed. Somebody read this book before I did and there's a bunch of highlighting from them and some underlining, but there's also a bunch of post-it notes and this is one of them. 
not the yipping. I just, not that that has anything to do with anything. So let's get into the reading vlog because I have talked way too much in this intro already. <laughs> It's a little bit later and I got some mail <laughs> which I'm gonna be unboxing and that is the June Aloma crate I <laughs> literally every time I hold up this box I forget what month it is I just as a little reminder I am an Aloma crate rep so if you want to use my code kd 5 for 5% off your three or six month subscription I'll, I'll leave all the stuff down below <laughs> I don't remember what the theme is I think it's I know it's like teal and gold. I know what the color palette is. I don't, however, remember what the theme is. Let's open it up and see if we can remember what the theme is. Ah, fight for your future. Here we go. See, I knew it was teal and gold. Oh, spoilers. Um, oh, I forgot there was a mug in here. This box is also very pretty. Look at this. Look at the colors. Wow. So like I said, this is a mug. I think if I remember correctly, the mug was inspired by... Oh my god, what was it? Children of Blood and Bone? Maybe? Wow, this is... Oh. Oh my god. This is gorgeous. Maybe I'm wrong. But wow. Look at this design. This is actually stunning. Look at these two. Oh. I need to figure out what it's inspired by right now. Girls of Paper and Fire, what did I say? I never read it. I've heard great things though. And this is, I've already said it, but this mug is gorgeous. I love the colors on it. And as always, these mugs are designed by Rosie Thorns 88. I'm already obsessed with it. Yes, anyway, let's get into whatever we have going on here. Oh, it's a passport cover. Okay. This says the planet was beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> Oh my god, I literally cannot read things out loud to save my life. I'm so sorry. The planet was beautiful. The planet was horrible. The planet was full of people and they were beautiful and horrible too. Okay, love. And this is inspired by A Close and Common Orbit. What is by Becky Chambers? Did she write The Long Way to a Small and Angry Planet? And it is designed by Allie Oldfield. So I see bookends. I actually don't think I have any bookends could probably use some though to be honest so <laughs> here's can i even show you these hey see me right through them um so here's the bookends they say on my honor my life and my jade is this from like what is that series called um it had a book called jade legacy aha jade city duh am i am i stupid these are designed by stacy mcavoy kant they're inspired by jade city that series by fonda lee i believe these are really cool i don't know if i'm vibing with the color but the stenciling on them is very, very cool. I like that a lot. So, okay, the last thing in here I do believe is inspired by the dark artifices. So that's exciting. We all know my love for the Shadow Hunters Chronicles. And it's like a cloth book jacket, which I've never seen before. I believe this is the Los Angeles Institute. And I think that is Emma and Christina. Did I put it on one of my books? I should put it on one of the books, huh? A little test their sheet. Did I put it on the wrong way? No. That's so cool though. Wow. And the artwork is by Pahami. Very talented. I love this art style. I think it's very cool. Okay, so now it is time for the book. Oh, it's so, t so small. I love small books. I have no idea what this is going to be. They posted like the, you know, like the plot summary, but I can never guess what they are from that. So, oh wow. This is a, an aggressive color. <laughs> oh, that is very pretty though. But this book is We All Fall Down by Rose Sabo. And it is signed by the author, which is very fun. Smell nice though. So I've never heard of this book before, but the cover of it is very pretty. It's got like some gold foiling, but it's like matte gold foiling. There's also a little letter from the author, which is very fun. Let's get a little plot summary of the book going on. In a city where magic is fading, which is becoming obsolete, the city's crumbling government is now controlled by the new university and teaching hospital, which has grown to overtake half the city. Four young queer people struggle with the daily hazards of life 
worked school and dodging the ruthless cops and unscrupulous scientists, not realizing that they have been selected to play in an age-old drama that revives the flow of magic through their world. When a mysterious death rocks their fragile peace, the four are brought into each other's orbits as they uncover a deeper magical conspiracy. Anyway, this box is super cool. I, let's see, favorite item honestly has to be the mug. That is the, God, what month are you? June Illumicrate, one of these days. I will be able to remember what month I am unboxing off the top of my head. Today is not one of those days. Um, the July theme is in too deep. We have these gorgeous pastel colors, which I'm very excited about. So yes, very cool. Can't wait to go use my mug. And as always, if you want 5% off of a three or six month subscription, you can use the code Katie 5 All of the information will be in the description as always. And thank you again to Lumicrate for sending me this. Um, being a rep is so fun. And I actually got renewed for another rep term. So that's really exciting. So I will also be unboxing their July through October boxes. So now I will get back into reading one of those books. I don't know which one though. everybody it is wednesday morning and i am here with my reading updates from yesterday so first of all i did not read any more of legendary still on page like 190 i'm hoping to make some progress in it today though like i'm gonna make that a priority so hopefully i can get a decent chunk of this read it reads really quickly so i think i can make some good progress in it and i'm gonna kind of just prioritize that next up i did make um some decent progress in crescent city so i'm now to page 348 and it's definitely getting better i think now that bryce and hunt kind of have like this back and forth banter kind of thing going on i am more interested in this story because i don't really think the mystery can stand on its own no offense like it's just kind of boring if it's if that's all you're focusing on which is kind of what the first 200 pages of this book was so it's like not great that it took like 250 pages for this book to get kind of interesting but I don't love it, but I don't hate it, and I think I'm going to like the romance. Although Hunt also just kind of seems like all of Sarah J Mass's other love interests. I don't know. <laughs> it's not bad, but it's just... I'm not going to read any of this today just because um, Elaine isn't super far into this yet, so I'm going to wait for her. So I'm going to let this just like sit for today, which... I don't mind. And then I am now up to page 244 of Dracula. So I think I read about 80 pages yesterday. Still really enjoying this. Finally seeing some vamps in action. Although the one vamp that was in action is now not in action. But I think Dracula obviously is going to come back into the story at some point. So I'll be interested to see how that happens. I, li I don't know like what really happens at the end of this book. I don't know if anything like big does happen i mean they probably kill dracula which i feel like that's something i should know or maybe something i should be able to infer but i don't like i said still really enjoying this they spent a large chunk of the last 80 pages in a graveyard which i was like yes give me the spooky creepy graveyards where the vampires are running around i love it just the atmosphere and the vibes of this book are top notch. I wish I was reading this like in the fall. This would be the perfect atmosphere book for fall, obviously. But yesterday, I did find an atrocious fact that I will be sharing with you just because I don't want to be the only one that's traumatized. Um, apparently in a museum in Milan in the 1700s, somebody found a four pound spider. Four pounds 
Like, I had to fact check this. I was like, there's no way that somebody found a spider that big. And someone did. And I'm terrified, frankly. Like, I've never seen a four pound spider. I'm just gonna assume I won't see a four pound spider in my life. Knock on wood. There's no wood. Knock on wood. <laughs> it's just atrocious. Anyway, I'm just having such a fun time reading this book, honestly. Yeah, that's the update for this morning. I've been talking for like 12 minutes at this point. I really don't know how to shut up. I think my goal for this morning, even though it's already 11, is gonna be to read some of Legendary. Ideally, I'd like to finish it today, but that's also like 300 pages, and I don't know if I um, can do that. If I, my attention span is gonna be on my side today, I don't know, but I am gonna start reading this. It's a little bit later and I'm now on page 385 of Legendary, I believe. And oh my god, this book is getting really good, actually. Like, I was really skeptical in the beginning, but I'm really into the ending of this book. The plot has just taken so many twists and turns. I'm really starting to like the characters more. There's this relationship brewing that I'm really liking, but our main character, Tella, doesn't know if she can trust this man. And I am just like... It really has taken quite a turn since like page 200, I think. Um, but this is like 180 pages later and it has gotten so much better. And I'm so happy about that because I was really hoping I would love this book. And I'm definitely loving the end of it. I'm very much going to be finishing it tonight. I'm so excited to see what happens. And I'm even more excited to see how this is going to lead to another book because this almost feels like this should be the end of something but like there's a whole other book i'm just so happy that it got better so that is very exciting i'm going to go read the last 110 pages and i will update you then just finished up legendary and also the thing that i predicted to happen kind of happened so i'm feeling like <laughs> i never guess things correctly in books so when i do it is an exciting day i just really enjoyed the end of this book i thought it was fascinating i really liked everything that was going on and i can't wait to see how this continues in the last book of the trilogy. I'm really excited to read it and probably gonna start it really soon so i'm just so hyped to see how this all concludes because I still have many questions so I'm gonna take a little break and then I'm going to hop back into reading Dracula which I'm also very excited about so good stuff today Hello everybody, it is Thursday morning. I am here with a Dracula update. I am now on page 312, so I think I have about 100 pages until the end of the book, so I think my goal is gonna be to finish it today. Like, I think if I put my mind to it, I can do it. I don't think it should be too hard considering it's the last like 100 pages of the book. It's gonna be like the ending climactic scene hopefully where they slay some vampires and I'm very excited but also very nervous for my girl Mina. I love Mina and first of all she deserves better. I don't hate these men that she is working with but just so many of these men suck. They have mentioned so many times how happy they are that they have left Mina out of their looking for vampires and how she's just a fragile woman who can't handle it and i'm like shut up leave her out of it if you want to because obviously they're gonna do whatever they want to do but don't feel all high and mighty because you're saving her from dracula when in reality they're probably just making the situation worse because they're leaving her there unattended i mean come on now not that she has to be attended but like you know what i mean you know what i mean like men make me upset especially these men. <laughs> I'm just not a fan. However, like aside from that, which is like 
a glaring issue in so many classics, so I'm really not surprised at all. I'm still liking it. It's definitely a lot slower, but like I said, hopefully it's going to start picking up in the end. And I'm excited to see how this book ends because, you know, I'm going to assume they save Dracula, obviously, but... I don't know. So it's honestly just like really fun and the way that it's told is really easy to follow and I'm just so happy that I decided to pick this up and finish it this week because I think I've been reading it since May which isn't like that long but I never read books over a span of time like that. I'm always too impatient and if I don't finish them I just DNF them but I'm honestly just shocked that I remember what happened so um I feel like that speaks volumes so yes. That is how Dracula is going. I think right now me and my mom are gonna go to lunch and then I'm gonna go visit one of my favorite places which is the Pen Isle at Michael's because two of my mild liners that I've been using to highlight in this book are running out because I've been using them so much. So I really need to go pick up replacements for these and I think I'm gonna pick up another pilot gel pen because I'm also running out of ink in this. I've just been drawing so many bats in this book and it takes up so much ink because I just color the whole thing in. So that's kind of the update for this morning. I will come back from lunch, definitely going to read more of Dracula and I will update you then. announce that I finished Dracula last night. The ending wasn't necessarily as action-packed as I was hoping for and the second half of the book is definitely so much slower than the first but I still had a really good time reading this book and I'm just so glad that I decided to finally pick this up so I can stop being a fake vampire fan. I'm always going on about how I love vampires yet I hadn't read one of the biggest pieces of vampire literature out there so I feel really accomplished right now. This is also the longest classic I've ever read, so in that respect, I also feel very accomplished. But just overall, it was such an interesting read. I loved the atmosphere, I loved the writing so much, and I just thought it was so good. Would I recommend this? It really depends. The first part of this book, where the main character, Jonathan Harker, is staying at Dracula's castle in Transylvania is clearly the best part. It's got the best vibes, the best descriptions. I was so enthralled and I feel like that being in the beginning is a really good way to get readers to keep reading it, you know, because it's just, if you like 
horror and vampires and whatnot, you're gonna eat it up. I can just guarantee you that you're gonna eat up the first part of this book. It does get less interesting as far as setting goes because for the rest of the book it kind of just takes place in this seaside town in England, which is, you know, less atmospheric, although there is a large portion of this book that just takes place in a graveyard which I was also very into. But the ending of the book is honestly just not as good as the first part of the book. So keep that in mind if you do think you want to read this. It's worth it, but it's just something good to know. I would love to honestly reread this book. I was kind of just reading it for fun, but upon like a reread at some point later in my life, there's no way I'm gonna reread this anytime soon. I would love to like actually analyze the themes that are going on here because I think they're really interesting and obviously there's so much more to the story than it just being a vampire terrorizing this town. There's themes of good versus evil, there's themes of sexuality and sexism and all that kind of stuff but I just think it'd be really interesting to actually dissect and analyze those parts of the book so hopefully upon a further reread I can delve more into that, do more research, but this read through is definitely just to like get the feel for the story and just have a good time, which I definitely did. There are other things I want to discuss, but like I don't know if they can be considered spoilers because I don't know if I- can you spoil Dracula? Like it's a- not a like a main part of the plot, so like maybe I- maybe I Am I allowed to spoil a classic? Like how, what's the protocol there? I have no idea. Um, so maybe I won't talk about that, but there are a couple of things that I picked up on that I really liked. I definitely want to, like, do a little bit of my own research later about, like, vampires in literature. And I know it started with some story, I think, by Lord Byron, maybe? Which I'd like to look into. I don't know if I'm gonna read it because it's from, like, the 1700s and that sounds like big brain reading. But I'd like to just know things about it. And I'm also going to read, um, Carmilla by Sheridan Le Fanu, I believe, which is a vampire story that was written even before Dracula, and I'm so excited to read that. I think I'm gonna read it for Summerween, which I'm really excited about, and I think it's gonna be a good time because there's like sapphic themes going on, and I'm just so excited about that. So definitely I'm gonna be rereading Dracula at some point in my life just because it's just such a good classic. Although honestly, it didn't scare me. I was reading through like just the Wikipedia article on it last night, which I know, um, very academic research as you can tell, but apparently it wasn't very popular when it was first published and eventually there was like some copyright battle that made it popular, which I find really interesting. That happened in like the 1920s, so like 30 years after it was actually published, but um, a lot of people didn't like it because they felt it was too scary. And honestly, I could see how people in the 1890s might find this scary, but there was like no part in this book in which I was scared. And I have a very large inkling that that is because all of the vampire media that I have consumed and have loved kind of paint the vampires as protagonists <laughs> instead of antagonists, which I think is really funny because I love The Vampire Diaries and Twilight. I would like to publicly apologize to Mr. Stoker for saying that in front of his book, but I do. And in Vampire Diaries, it's like vampire versus vampire and you're following the good vampires and kind of the same thing happens in Twilight. So I'm like, vampires aren't scary, they're just hot. <laughs> Dracula honestly just seems like kind of a wimp because the way he dealt with this opposition was just to run away from it and run all the way back to Transylvania instead of just like bite their heads off. I'm like, dude, you're Dracula with so many powers on your side. You could have just like snuck into their house and killed them all in the middle of the night and then this book would have been obsolete. For a however many hundred years old vampire, he was kind of stupid, not gonna lie. But yeah, I've been talking about Dracula for like 10 minutes. I just loved it so much and I had such a good time reading it. It's probably my favorite classic, honestly. I think it has to be thus far. So that's so exciting and I'm actually even more excited because something I'm going to be reading soon is another story by Bram Stoker, but this is a very short story. I forgot I had this book. I think it was my parents. I found it on their shelf, but I stole it for my own collection. This is a collection of vampire short stories, and I'm so excited I have this, and also the art on it is just stunning. I love the bat on the back. It's my favorite part, but I'm not here to give you, like, a review of the cover, but also, I kind of am. 10 out of 10. This has a couple of different short stories in here that I'd like to look into. Well, first of all, it has Carmilla in it, which I'm not gonna read it from this copy, but I didn't even realize it had Carmilla in it. 
But this has Dracula's Guest, which is a short story by Bram Stoker, which I believe was supposed to be the first chapter of Dracula, but he deleted it from like the finished copy. And now I can read it here, which I'm really excited about because I believe that means it'll take place in the castle, which is my favorite part of the book, like I said. So I'm really excited to read that. Honestly, it's only like 12 pages, so I might go read it later today, which is exciting. So I'm really excited to look into these. There's so many of them and I can't wait to read through some of them. Ideally, I'd like to read all of these at some point in my life just because I love vampires in any sort of media. So anyway, as for what I want to do today, I don't know. I need to text Elaine and see where she's at with Crescent City because I am still on page, I think, 350? 348. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish this in the vlog just based on how the timing is going to work. So I kind of need to pick a different book to read, but I don't know what that's going to be. I'll figure it out later. But I do think after lunch, I'm going to go out and do some thrift shopping for books just because it sounds fun. And I haven't looked at like actual thrift stores for books in a little bit. And there's a couple around me that I'd like to check out. I also do think I'm going to go to Half Price Books just because... We all know my love for half price books. I literally go there like three times a week now that I have one close to me and it's kind of ridiculous, but it's also kind of fun. So those are the plans for the day. Sorry, I've talked so much this morning, but I just had so much to say. So I'll see you guys later. <laughs> total number of copies of new moon that i found in that thrift store it was eight and honestly like it is an assault to my senses but also deserved i always find copies of new moon at thrift stores because like duh but i've never seen that many anyway i have two more thrift stores that i'm gonna go into i found a couple of books at the last one which i will show you when i get home and I'm really excited because I found a book I've actually been meaning to buy, so that was great. And now I'm going to go see what these other stores have. if you can see her tail right there and you can see the rest of her right here Aww. and i'm quickly going to show you what i found at the couple of stores i went to so i went to three thrift stores and then i went to half price books i didn't really find anything at half price books that i wanted to pick up i am going to show you what i got from the thrift stores though so first up i picked up a penguin black spine edition of east of eden by john steinbeck this is just in case i ever want to get in my modern classic mood. I mean, I don't think I'm gonna read this at any point in time soon, but it was only $2 and it's in good condition and I can keep it for however long I want to. And maybe at some point in time, I will decide I want to read this. So not mad about that. And then I picked up another classic, which scares me yet intrigues me. And that is Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. This is a big one. I think it's around 800 or so pages. I've been watching a lot of people who like vlog about classics talk about it and i'm just intrigued and i've been thinking about reading it and i saw this at the thrift store 
for two dollars. I was like, that is a sign, my friend. I must pick it up. So I did. And I'm really excited that I found this edition specifically. I don't love the art on the front of it, but I like the construction of these books a lot because this is in the Penguin Classics deluxe kind of line they have. It's the same line that Dracula is a part of. Obviously they have different cover art, but the construction of the book is the same with the deckled edges, French flaps. They're just really nice and floppy, which I really appreciate because I need classics to be comfortable to read, you know, or else I will give up and use that as an excuse to not read it anymore. Um, it's floppy, it's nice, and it'll be good to annotate because the pages are nice and thick. And like I said, it was only $2, so I really couldn't pass it up, and I'm very excited that I found this, so. And then this last one, I just had to pick up, um, even though I've already read the this book basically. I saw that it had something in it and I really wanted the something in it but I was like I kind of need to buy the book to get the something in it. You know what I'm saying? So I picked up The Lord of the Rings. I've already read The Lord of the Rings. I loved The Lord of the Rings. It was great and when I saw this I was really excited just because I like the ring and the gold text against the black. I've seen this edition a couple of times and I just really like it and I opened it up because it had a bookmark in it. And when I saw the bookmark, I was like, absolutely, I need to buy it. <laughs> because I think this is like, um, I don't know, like a promotional bookmark for one of the Hobbit movies, but it has Gandalf on it. <laughs> and I just, I really wanted this bookmark. So, um, worthy purchase, honestly. I'm just, I'm hyped for my Gandalf bookmark, you know? I'm also excited to have this edition of it. I like having multiple editions of books that I like, so I'm not mad about it, so. As you can see, we kind of have a theme going on here. All thick books with black spines. I don't think I'm gonna do any reading today, honestly, just because Dracula wiped me out yesterday. I read like a hundred or so pages and my brain hurts. So I don't think I'm gonna read anything. I don't know. I'm just talking out loud here, but I will definitely update you if I make any decisions. Hello everybody. It's actually a couple days later and I'm here to wrap up the vlog because I didn't realize it, but this vlog is getting rather long. I think it's getting to be like 40 minutes now, which is a lot, you know, so I'm just gonna call it good. I did not finish Crescent City or really make much progress in it, like at all. I think, I don't know, I am decently enjoying it, but it's not like something that I'm obsessed with and I'm like, I have to read all of this right now. You know, I can take a while with it. It'll be okay. Oh, I forgot to mention Fritz is here. She looks just like a lump. Hi. <laughs> and then I'll quickly talk about the other books that I finished. First up, the one I'm the most proud of, Dracula. Obviously, like I've said so many times, I'm so glad I finally read this book and I actually loved it so much. Consciously looking past the slow parts of the book because overall, I did really enjoy it, you know? And then I also finished Legendary, which I have already started finale. I think I've listened to about 10% of it on audiobook. And I am also enjoying that one so much. So I'm just really glad this one picked up towards the end because I was loving the writing, but the plot wasn't really grabbing my attention. But since the plot picked up, it's just so good. I love Stephanie Garber's writing style so much. It's so whimsical and just fun. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the vlog. If you did, as always, let me know down below. Actually, should I, should I come up with a better question? If you enjoyed the vlog, let me know down below. Have you read any classics recently? I feel like that was like my big read of this vlog was Dracula. So have you read Dracula? Did you like Dracula if the answer to the first question is yes? If not, how do you feel about classics? I know they're not for everybody. I definitely get like in and out of moods like of wanting to read classics. And right now I'm in a big one. I've read like two, so. I really hope you guys enjoyed the vlog. Did I already say that? I'm just gonna go. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Bye.